everybody. You're about to see a full length tutorial of the creation of this piece, which I did during a workshop. It is done in acrylic and I'm talking about light, contrast, color, pretty much everything you need to know. So enjoy it. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel so you can get the latest videos. Okay. So as usual, I'm just going to make a little puddle here. Lots of water and yellow. I mean, lots of water, yellow and orange and making this nice warm yellow. And we're going to just cover our canvas lightly with transparent color everywhere, but nice and bright because this is going to be popping through throughout the whole painting. So this immediately unifies our painting right away. It just creates this tone underneath. And as we know, acrylic dries so fast that we'll be ready to paint right on top of this right away, very, very quick. But even if it's still wet, we can still paint on top. So no worries. So let me know when you have it all covered. That's why I use this really big brush because one, two, three, and it's already covered. Just three brush strokes and it's already done. So don't sweat it, don't worry about it. If it's not perfect, as I said, you can, you can put a green background too. I just pick a color arbitrarily and go for it. So in this case, I just wanted to have this warmish, warm background behind. A lot of it will be covered anyway, so no big deal. Um, and as, as usual, we're going to sketch it out first. Sometimes you don't have to sketch it out, but uh, let's maybe our third session will be without the sketch and we're just going to start painting right away. But now for just for placement purposes, I'm going to mix a darker color. And last time I picked red and yeah, why not? Like a little red, a little purple, something darker so we can see it. And I'm just going to mix it right here. Hopefully you see, you see my palette. And I'm going to mix this dark red tone. And just for placement purposes, while your background is still wet, I'm going to, and please stop me if, if I'm going too fast, if you need some time. Even if your background is still wet, just go very quickly. See how I'm seeing this really big tree. Make sure it's not parallel. When you map, when you put it there on your canvas, make sure you don't make your lines too parallel to the edge. So see how I'm just putting a bit of an angle. This is how wide it's going to be. And I see how it goes down a bit here. There is the other side. It, they should not be the same. So see how the left one is a bit thinner the right one is a little bit more thick and again keep that angle there is a nice little angle that's going to frame the whole painting nicely on both sides so again right side a bit thicker and again with a slight angle a little bit of an angle and there will be all this nice roots here some darker chunks i'm already like kind of mapping a little bit here and then we will have this nice light in the background now there is another tree so in, think about the composition so we have one two three main trees so one is actually coming here at an angle and we see part of it don't lose sight of your proportions and how much space everything takes inside your painting. So here it's going to have some interesting uh, branches sticking out. There'll be a lot of fun to paint and I won't go into any details with those branches because we will paint first the background and then start slowly building anything that's in front. So. There is a whole bunch of other stuff going on in the back. Just placing it, kind of mapping it again here. All right, and there is a path. There is a little path here. Um, let's not make it completely in the center. I will kind of pull it a little on the left 
just see how it's not exactly in the center of my painting of my canvas so pay attention to this to the perspective basically what's in the front is a bit wider the path is wider and it gets slightly smaller as like thinner and disappears into the distance so then we have a whole bunch of brushes and we don't worry about all this because we will add those later so I'm ready to begin our painting let me know if I need to wait but this is base the basic sketch that we begin with very very rough we always make sure we rinse our brushes so they don't dry out and get destroyed and really drawing fast trains our eye brain coordination because your eye constantly looks at your reference looks at what you're doing and your hand basically tra translates this whole connection that's happening it's it's some sort of magic going in our brains but the more we do it and the faster we do it uh we kind of train that muscle that area in our brains to to really click and get get used to this whole coordination and comparing shapes so you know again thinner on the left keep that angle a bit of a slight angle I love this really fairy tale looking for us so that's gonna be so much fun to paint and although I do have a lot of colors on my palette I may end up using just a few and again we always after a limited palette and this reference is naturally having this limited palette so I don't think we will have any problem using the limited palette but notice there is just a, a little bit of uh, foliage some leaves popping in from both corners on the left and the right this is really really foreground and then we have the foreground of the two trees so the eye is gonna gradually go in and create that nice depth and of course ending with this light at the at the end which I really love and I'll show you how we can achieve these um, rays of light and how we can paint those too that's gonna be a lot of fun so let me know if you guys ready and we're gonna I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush and we're gonna start um, painting our shadows we always start with the darks and the shadows ready ready good all right <laughs> super duper okay if anybody's super behind let me know just speed up like map them real quick and you can actually start drawing them and painting them at the same time so I'm taking my medium like flat brush and I'm going to mix a darker color and just indicate where the shadows are so I'm taking the purple my favorite very dark violet that's rather violet so it is a violet and I'm mixing it with some green violet and green are going to make a very nice dark tone so here this is going to be the color of my shadow and squint your eye again and paint abstract we're just seeing everything really in a very abstract way so a little bit more violet here and I'm just indicating very very roughly all this shadow even if it looks thin, thinly painted, you don't have to worry about it right now. But make sure that the value, the value is dark. And that's why I use this dark violet. If you don't have the violet, you can always use the umber, raw umber or bird sienna. They can give you a nice dark tone mixed with green. Absolutely, yeah. So here I'm just mapping in a very, very abstract way. I know like three-fourths of that tree is all in the shadow this whole area also 
I'm just, as when I squint my eye, I just see here it's all gonna be shadow. So don't fill it in. It's okay if you have some areas kind of popping through of some light here. I'm just bringing it down this whole shadow area. So a little bit warmer. I just dipped into the red a bit. So kind of to warm this up a little bit over here. And moving to the right, I'm putting my shadow right here. Again, green with, with the violet, almost looking black. And we will add some more darks there, but I ju I'm just mapping again, keep mapping. It's going to be very nice, uh, interesting, a kind of ominous fant fantasy mood this all right and there is that tree right here so even if you didn't kind of outline and you didn't sketch it right away this this is what we can do just basically paint to paint the darks first and map what we see super super fast and it is kind of transparent uh, it's painted lightly shadows generally are good to be more thinly painted, not too thick and light is usually impasto, that style. Again, that is not carved in stone. We can, you can always experiment different ways, but it does give more air, more breathing, breathing space to your painting. So here I'm just adding this dark. So I'm not putting any more details because I really want to now move to more of the medium value. So let's get some green going. And that is a bit too bright. So I'm just gonna pop in this green with maybe some yellow and maybe some orange to tone it down. And here I'm making another mix. Again, very, very abstract. We're not putting any, any details right now. I'm just seeing this abstract shapes here of these brushes, of these bushes here on the side as well. And actually the more you move your brush in any direction and it leaves some very nice interesting brush strokes. So definitely keep that. I like that. It shouldn't be super smooth or very slick. So here I'm just putting this nice tone right here and just leaving the light for now and here just around that path i'm adding some more green and again this color will change this is sort of building the values right now kind of at the first layer so now we can uh for the background so we're going to move now to this light in the back and we're going to try to create a smoother background. And tell me if you're behind, if you're still mapping. So I'm gonna slow down a bit. If you're not even near the light at all, uh, I will wait a little bit. Maybe while you're painting out, how about we paint this path? Just put a main color, like a medium value for the path. So I'm taking some orange, a little bit of red, a little bit of orange, and putting this you could slow slow down Lucy that'd be sure. great awesome okay absolutely yes I'm just very I'll slow down here while I'm at that path and you guys go ahead I'll catch up I'll wait but hopefully you can see what's going on right so just very basic that's why if you're depending on your size really what size you're using if it's what I have 11 I believe it's 11 by 14 so get a bigger brush and quickly quickly move these uh, map these shapes okay so here we go all right i'm just gonna use my brush and there are many different ways to actually approach paintings and I mentioned last time you can start with a really dark background and pull things out like maybe 
we can do this the, the, the third session, next session, but now we're still starting with the median value because that's the more natural way of actually starting. And, uh, or we can start with the light coming forward. Now we are just doing the classical way with really mapping the darks, mapping the median value, and then going into the light. And then slowly go into the details. Ask any questions uh, if you want, or ask me which colors we're using. Again, for the shadow, I like that purple or violet. It's really great for for shadow. It's really good. It gives this a bit of a charm, natural charm. If I use black, it would have made it really dull. It kind of goes immediately into the gray, grays and gives this kind of a chalky look in the shadows, which I'm not a big fan. I like vibrancy. So definitely a color, two colors mixed for the shadow definitely gives you a more vibrant painting. Even if you don't have violet, blue and red will give you that color. Yeah, I can just mix them, make a little bottle, blue and red. And again, depending on what's the temperature outside, if you're painting a winter scene, if you're painting a summer scene, you can really give a sense of atmosphere just by using the color temperature. If you're using warm tones versus cool tones. So in this case, our shadow could be cool in some areas or it could be warm, depends. Maybe towards the bottom it could be warmer or towards the top it can cool off a bit and adding some more blues that can add some nice effect. I like this uh, ultramarine. Do I have, is that an ultramarine? I have a blue that is a yes, it is an ultramarine and two blues. One is cobalt, one is ultramarine. They're both lovely. And also, I s also have this turquoise that I use for accents sometimes, but we may not use it this time. So make sure you're really rough so you don't worry about you know filling in you don't worry about the shapes exactly i know we drew them they probably you can probably see them a little bit some of your lines you can see them through just very roughly map 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 brush strokes everywhere i'm gonna drink my water <laughs> I have this very nice view in front of me. I have a window that sees that I look at a pond with a fountain with trees around. It's so beautiful. I wish you guys here and we could paint plain air right there outside and paint the pond. <laughs> that would have been awesome. One day, one day maybe. Really painting from a photo, painting from life it engages different set of senses when you're outside you just get so much information you're just being bombarded by the world and your painting ends up being more alive somehow that's my conclusion i love it but uh when we paint from a photo we can always engage the same type of approach all right so show me if you want to show me this particular stage that is the very initial stage of laying down our shadows let me know if you want to uh, just don't hesitate show me your painting how it's going and I can always come on because that is an important stage you're basically determining your values right away and the dark is all super important and I know there is a bit of a dark here and no details zero details in the beginning just squint your eye and whatever you see and even my darks now don't see don't seem quite dark i will darken them even more but right now they are good and i have this indigo i really love that indigo it's really dark it's like a blue black but it's 
more on the blue side. It's really interesting color. I love using it. I love using it even for watercolor too. If you guys into watercolor or different medium, it's a lot of the principles are really interchangeable. They're universal. They apply to any and all. So that tree here behind the tree on the left, because it's further, it needs to be treated different, differently. We will pick a different color for it. We don't want it to be the same value of dark. Even though it does look dark, we will make it a, a slightly lighter value than the one that's in the very front. So even probably use a cooler, cooler color. So I'm just gonna mix right now. Speaking of it, I'm just gonna mix a bit of a blue right here and a little bit of a purple, violet. Maybe tap on that turquoise. That gives you a, a, a nice mix. Instead of mixing it with white, the turquoise can give you a nice lighter shade. So I can just slightly lighten it up. See how it's almost purple now, but not so bright, not super bright. Just so I know that I don't really want this to be as dark as the one behind or in the front. And actually going outside of the lines is a good thing. So I highly encourage it. Don't worry about being ultra precise. Throw that little brush and leave it for later. Take a bigger brush and go, go around very quickly. So if you're ready, we're gonna move now towards this light area in the background. And we're going to try to paint a bit smoother, not our usual paint roll, but uh, slightly smoother. But le let's mix nice, uh, a nice color to that light. I'm just cleaning. I keep using the same brush and I like to clean it. I have a few favorites and I just stick with them. So here is my white. So I'm just going to mix a nice color, maybe a bit of blue, um, sorry, yellow white a little bit of yellow a little bit of white and a very very thick thickly and let's paint this background that's going to be the light sort of horizontally giving us a bit of a nice sense of light and don't you know paint circles or sun we we're not going to define any of those shapes there's actually nothing like that over there so I know that there are going to be some leaves in the front but as you can see I'm just moving horizontally and just having this yellow white color like a very light yellow basically and maybe add some now we want to brighten up a bit and put some more yellow here around so that's going to be the light. Don't worry about the sun, the, the rays of light yet. That's going to be the last thing we're going to add because first we need to paint the, actually the details and then the very last thing is we will add a bunch of uh, light rays, those rays. But now I just want to kind of brighten up this, make it nice and yellow right here. So this is again mapping your values. That is the whole purpose of this right now. Slightly lighter in the middle. And again, don't worry if nothing looks like anything. Again, this is again super abstract. And when you squint your eye and look at your painting, yeah, it should look like little blotches, really like light, medium, dark, little blotches of paint.
we all on the same page here? Guys? Anybody? Everybody? What is it? 6.30. We have a whole hour. And now the fun part is going to begin. After you put these main, main areas, now the fun part is the detail. And we are just about to start with the details. But see, we, we don't really waste too much time on overthinking it, overanalyzing it. We just want to see the big picture again. Big, small, big, big is first, always. As long as we have our big areas painted, we are on a good, we have a good start. And you see how this um, underpainting that we did probably shows through in some areas, almost like a light popping through. Yeah, don't hesitate to show me work in progress. This is, it's actually very helpful to show your work in that stage because I can easily tell you, yeah, that looks just about right. And because now this is gonna be the fun part with the details, but we, if we don't have, okay, I see Jill, Jill yeah. is showing. Yeah, here's the prophecy. Yes, yes. Very good. I love it. It's rough. It's super cool. Uh, I see maybe a little yellow. You can just add some more yellow. Okay. And I see, yes. Is that Susan? No, that, okay. Perfect. Everybody's doing fantastic. So make sure your path, like the perspective of the path is like really like thin and gets wider as you just, okay. I see more. I see more paintings popping up. Super. This is going to be a great, great, great exercise. Okay, awesome. So make sure your your path ends right here somewhere, like um, not quite in the middle, a little bit below. If you put it too high, it may look strange. So yeah, don't, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. You can actually always stand up or pull your painting, like look at it right in front of you instead of an angle, because sometimes when we sit, we just see it in an angle as sometimes things start looking a bit off but don't worry uh, we have a great start i see you guys having a nice very nice m mapping areas ma area maps so now we are starting with the fun part of details do we uh do you guys all have your palette knives palette knives big small medium and all my brushes started to fall. All right. So we're going to create some nice texture <clears throat> on those trees. And I will take my smaller palette knife and I will just grab some of this, my, some of my darker colors. So I, I probably will grab here, I'm getting the indigo, not black really, not black, but just I'm getting some indigo some purple see if i'm just kind of mixing it i'd like you to get used to the palette knives they're fantastic it's a very nice painterly tool and this is some super dark not quite black but very very dark and if you look at the your picture let's pop this very dark right here so i'm just sliding it very horizontally i hold my knife horizontal I see I see a bit of a dark here there is some interesting roots at the very bottom so we just follow follow what we see right there so the, mm -hmm. so here we have maybe see how when it when I slide my knife kind of like completely hor horizontal or parallel to the to the canvas it creates this nice texture so if you slide it as if you you know put in butter it creates a nice texture of that bark like right on top and hopefully you mix the, a darker color so it should be darker than that initial color that's underneath so i'm just sliding it right like that 
that is the tree that is going to be a little bit thicker on the right and yeah you can scratch things too uh, the surface just look at where the darks are and approach it in a in a, in a abstract way. We're still sticking to the abstract. We're just now building the values again. There's more dark. Now I'm moving to the <coughs> left side. I see this very, very dark area right here. That's where all these roots are. There is another one. So violet, indigo. If you don't have indigo you can grab black because this is the super dark area so this will kind of create some very nice dark accents right here and sliding it to create the texture on top on very top again Keep going, we're just going horizontal here. So make sure you don't create super smooth or perfect textures because the texture should have you know some kind of a dry dry technique. We're skipping some areas. So don't worry if it's uh, outside of the line, so it's not exactly following the drawing. This is acrylic, it's just like well, we can always paint on top. So right now we are basically creating this interesting texture of the trees. And some areas are so dark, I can now actually grab a little bit of black without mixing it with anything and I really want to pop this black right here. It's almost like a very dark area right here. And of course over here. So just non-distinct shape, just black non-distinct right here. And maybe a few going up. So you should be slowly now seeing a bit thicker kind of texture your painting and I'm wiping my knife and we're gonna now mix a bit of a lighter color for the lighter area of these trees that are in the foreground so I'm gonna grab I'm going to grab some yellow so we see some yellow and we'll get some maybe orange a little yellow orange it's okay if you have two colors not completely mixed on your knife. I don't know if you can see it, but see how in the front of the knife and the tip I have orange, the rest is yellow. So now we can just slide here and do this whole light area. Again, when you slide it very horizontally, it gives you this uh, interesting texture. See how it does this cool texture. And now my yellow is so bright. I really don't want it to be so bright and I'm gonna tone it down a little bit so I'm grabbing some orange I'll tone down just pick a maybe get some violet two opposite colors when they're mixed they create some sort of a grayish tone gray or brown that tones it down so opposites are orange and purple are two opposites red and green are two opposites So when we mix those, we get a bit of a really neutral, more of a neutral tone. So this is how I'm going to neutralize this super bright. But again, make sure you slide with your uh, with your knife horizontally. Just hold it horizontally and lightly. You don't have to press too much. You don't have to mix anything on your canvas. Nothing should be mixed. The whole mix happens on your palette here and we're just laying it and slowly moving it down here so just a kind of a 
tone down some of this super bright areas because this tree up on the very top is still in the shadow kind of a little bit so here I'm adding some more nice tones Lucy what color was that again those were the was that like a the orange orange and a little bit of purple and kind of mix it on your palette and you're gonna get a bit of a neutral so orange see I'm having orange and a, and that purple or violet so when you mix it, you get this really non-distinct, almost dull brown, brownish color that what tones down my super bright yellows here. But again, very lightly, just slide it down. And we will build this. We'll, this area is going to get some more color. So I'm just slowly creating texture. Tree texture, bark, bark and leaves. These are just fabulous, fabulous areas to paint and and really have a lot of fun with. So this same color that we just mixed, the orange and the purple, that's kind of a brown, dull brown, uh, can be also used here in the shadow a little bit and you can have a little bit of texture there without losing your darks, you know, we put already darks, but it's a bit of building, a little bit of building some of this shadow area. So it gets now lighter as we go further down. So I'm grabbing some yellow and everything is recording. So you can always look at that link after we are done. I will post it. I'm making sure everything is recording. camera kind of turns off after a certain time it's recording all right so we're doing I'm gonna mix again a little bit of yellow some maybe a dash of orange to warm it up and I think I still have some leftover green but this this interesting color here we're gonna slide it for the light part it shouldn't be smooth again it should not be flat remember make sure you slide it very lightly so it leaves a cool very nice texture almost like you can just dab it if you want but you'll see you kind of gonna feel your way through and you will see how it leaves this very interesting texture if you don't have it don't worry you can always we can always build it i told you you can have a really like a half inch thick painting if you'd like so i know this goes down a bit see in some areas it pops in this is a these are organic shapes so nothing should be super smooth super sharp this edge we're gonna kill some parts of it um some show some don't uh be very creative with the way you not too um, rigid with the way you're laying your brush strokes or knife strokes rather here there's one probably more of a line like a little light showing one showing here and of course as it goes through the to the dark it gets a bit darker so I keep popping this orange with a little purple to get this brownish tone and I see it right here if you want to lighten it up always add some yellow so here I'm seeing and you know we can always finalize our details with a smaller brush eventually but for now we're just laying it creating excitement really with this brush uh, knife strokes you are really creating awesome textures there's no other way with the brush will end up kind of making too smooth too yeah it's not quite the same feeling so I like that approach really especially in the beginning so you can you know put a little bit of dots here there's there's something over here so there is some leaves and slowly but truly I'm gonna now start moving to the path and just squint your eye and just you see abstract little shapes right so I'm taking some yellow 
and you'll see how very quickly you're starting to add your really your details there's a little bit of yellow the moment you start adding the light the details will start appearing now I'm gonna move to the same to the tree in the foreground on the left and it looks a bit greener so I'm gonna mix a nice green yeah I don't want them to be the same the left and right should be different obviously so I'm taking yellow and green and here I'm making this really nice bright yellow um, sorry green yellow green tone that's going to be the light of this tree on the side so again very lightly slide it and create some cool texture of a bark for the tree if you lose some of your texture and suddenly it came out too smooth you can always go back with a knife take some dark tone and lay out some dark on the top as long as it's uh, put in lightly so you see these interesting textures okay so you know looking again at our reference we see our the there is uh, roots these are the roots coming here maybe there is more like nothing should be again parallel roots are never parallel they're not like spaghetti you know they're just all going in different directions everything is going in different directions and again pop in a little bit of orange I see some warm tones here and mine look a bit too light compared to comparative to what I see there so I may actually end up toning it down at some point but for now I'm just adding some more texture on this tree and just having fun with this area right here and uh, I feel like I lost a little bit of dark so as I said here I'm just always grab dark tones and you can lay it up right on top of what you already put so here I'm I lost this dark so I'm just putting some now if you want to smooth some areas like have some blending going on because they're all in the shadow we want to get some dreamy look your colors are still wet and because they're painted thickly they're not dry yet so you can you know always uh, do a bit of a smoothing in some areas no not all but in some so maybe lose some edge here this is definitely uh, not Bob Ross <laughs> This is not a Bob Ross technique, but it ends up uh, having the same dreamy look. So yeah, you can maybe smooth some areas. It doesn't have to be all super texture, but because it's the foreground, it's nice to have nice sharp texture textures. Remember high contrast, darks in the very front, and that's what creates the feeling of distance. Okay, so because we have what we do we, yeah we have almost like we, yeah we need to move kind of fast so let's do in the next 30 minutes we're gonna very very quickly add all these other details so I'm gonna grab uh, yellow and green and I will be adding some more details right here in the foreground see I'm just dabbing dabbing and if something looks too bright just add a little bit of orange to it again some more uh, green here this is that area and again slide it to create texture of grass there is some grass going on right away now there is some nice green leaves as I mentioned in the beginning that they're probably here in the foreground so just quickly grab those highly recommend you guys paint fast and don't spend too much time in one area because you're gonna lose the freshness so just grab your color lay it down and whatever in whatever way and shape so don't try to quite be super uh, careful of what the shape is this is always at the very last is 
when we kind of add some more stuff. But here, so I'm just gonna add some more green over here. There's some more leaves on the on the right. So obviously they are in front of that tree, some of them. And just again, very abstract. There's some light popping through, so I'm just grabbing a little bit of yellow now, and I'm going to show maybe some light coming. But here, there's some shrubbery, little leaves. I'm just dabbing with my knife. Dab, 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 dab. I'm going to see how nice it's going to look. Just squint your eye, and you see like maybe like a little line, maybe it's just a cluster. Everything in nature is just kind of in groups and clusters. I've noticed so definitely pay attention here very quickly just going to start adding now maybe some light on this side and they get smaller so all these little shapes behind that tree are gonna are going to get a bit smaller and I'm mixing now green with white and some yellow because here this is all some light popping through So I'm basically painting now these little, th this light that is behind the trees. And here it's, it's showing in some area. In some areas a little bit more and some is a little less. Okay. And um, now uh, here's some on the right side, on the left side again, here we see some more leaves. And see, move very, very quickly. Just little dab, dab, dab. It's right there. Two it looks two greens. So always just jump. Always be aware that it should be all the same everywhere. There is some darks popping under. And we will pull out of all this knife work. We we are going to pull eventually with a with a brush some some interesting details. Not everything has to be pulled out. We are being selective. We're being very, very selective. So here, there are some leaves coming over here and some more now on top. So this is the second layer of our painting. So more green. And I know it looks very abstract. Don't worry, we will be very, very specific and we'll get more realistic later. So here I'm just adding some of these interesting leaves. Here in the very front. So we keep going back and forth into the shadow, into the light, shadow, light, shadow, light, until we are satisfied with what's happening here in the very front. And I know this path is not going to be very smooth, so I'm going to grab some yellow uh, and uh, yellow, orange, kind of a little, grab a little bit of even green and very slightly just create an another texture, just this whole texture. And I know there's light popping, right? <coughs> some light right here, right in the middle. So I'm just going to again very lightly put a texture and as it disappears it just lightens up a bit so I'm just grabbing some and we can make it more yellow eventually but for now I'm just indicating some texture so here we have some more maybe light areas and very very light green very light green I know there are trees here I'm just going to now grab my brush and sort of lighten up this area here a little bit because it looks a bit too orange be more on the yellow side because we will eventually put uh, the 
rays of light, but that's going to be the last. So I'm just going to quickly move to that tree in the back. It doesn't, I don't see much going on there. It kind of seems pretty flat and dark. So you can uh, add, like mix a bit of purple, again, a little bit of orange, just to create a slightly something subtly a texture. And now we're going to take our brush, a smaller brush, like I, I take a flat, and we start now painting all these things that we see in the background behind. So let's first tackle the these branches that are coming. So they're uh, orange, orange with a little bit of purple. So it shouldn't be too bright orange, and they're going into the light. So I'm mixing this color. Let's get some white in it. So a bit of orange and a bit of yellow, a green, green, orange, warm, warm tone. And slowly we're gonna pull this. It does look a bit too light. So let's mix it with some purple to darken it. And we're gonna slowly now paint here this interesting very interesting branch popping up and don't be afraid really and some areas of that branch will disappear because they are totally in the light now I'm seeing there are a few leaves you can either pop them with your brush or just grab your knife I may have missed those so very quickly just indicate yeah there are some leaves just be super rough with it don't worry about it again orange yellow make sure they're warm like the color you're using here for the very top should be warm that's the light okay so orange yellow more in the orange and yellows and again I'm going back now to this to these interesting branches they're really very interesting so there will be a, a lot of fun so don't forget purple to make a more cooler or more grayer rather because they do disappear into the light <coughs> So here is that violet again, violet and orange, and I'm grabbing, and with the brush here, this branch, maybe this is going here. Yeah, be very brave, really, don't overthink it, don't be too careful, just try to have some more expressive lines, we will always add some. It's never just the end of the world, like we put it and this is it. So here I'm gonna add some more trees. These are the trees in the background. Of course, they will be lighter. So I'm taking down this purple with, with the orange and I'm mixing this neutral, neutral color and I'm just bringing them out. Make sure they're not parallel to each other. Again, it's nature, so things are very sporadic in different direction okay some are going down and i know there's a lot going on over here so uh, let's lighten this area because now it's going into the light so slowly i'm just gonna put some more you know, a little bit of a lighter yellow because there's some trees going on here. It's that yellow again, so very, very light yellow. So I'm running out of yellow. Let's pop up some here on my palette and a smaller brush and with some yellow. I'm just 
you know very in, a, in abstract way just adding some trees right here something that you can't quite see so mix it yellow white and move your brush in any direction see i'm just adding the texture of the background here between the tree the negative shape we will do the 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 rays no worries this is going to be very soon so here we're just adding some more of this whole background going on and move that color a little bit down <coughs> so this yellow will pop in here i see some of these uh, really leaves having some of this yellow highlighting so you can just have tap 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 in some areas a little bit and we are going to now define that brush that bush that's behind that tree on the right so i'm gonna mix again it shouldn't be as dark as that tree it will have orange and yellow to it and a dab of green and again a little bit toned down but still on the darker side and i have now my smaller brush and trying to create these this pattern with the leaves coming right into the light but it's not dark it's not dark it's warm green green orange like really warm green basically so if you have a smaller brush now you can just dab dab to it you can create this with a palette knife as well but i want to probably use this brush for now since i'm using it already so just little build it build on top of it i'm sure there was a color already we're just adding some more detail to it so here we go and it just goes a little bit into the light we're just indicating what's happening and maybe some more green a little bit of brighter green move your brush vigorously quickly again we're not overthinking it some some lines and again just be inspired this is really nature it should not look geometric or super specific it should look really free kind of a painting painted impressionistically so i'm gonna grab my knife uh palette knife smaller the smallest and grab some yellow and i really want to tap some yellow little yellow dots into this area because this is really going to show how the light is lighting up highlighting these leaves right here they're being hit by the light so i'm adding some more over here maybe some dab dab try not to be exactly you know exactly the same everywhere maybe a line you will enjoy this if you're painting with a knife you're going to kind of find your way and start creating some really really cool interesting shapes and textures with it it is really hard to explain unless you're working on it and feeling it and exploring it depends on the angle of your knife and how it creates different textures maybe slide a bit here that's a little too dark so i'm just gonna every time i go dark i mean too light dark light i'm getting all mixed up so here maybe pop in some purple violet just to tone it down okay so we i'm still on this right side again some more yellow just to create some subtle smaller shapes and you can hold your knife so you don't lose it <laughs> take another small brush and have yellow again and all and green and just adding some more little shapes so there's a lot of little green shapes here going on just very very boldly add them and there's some lines too so this is where the knife comes handy you can grab some purple and mix it it shouldn't be dark now it's all because we're in this middle ground right in the middle so it should be medium value and we pop in some lines like these are 
trees or branches. Maybe some are going in that direction. Some. Don't worry if your painting looks thick. That's how it should be. And there are some darks like squinch your eye. We we can definitely add some now dark in this medium ground. Not too dark again. It should not be competing with that tree. That com tree is the darkest. But yeah, pop in some of this medium dark value somewhere. Okay, so here the same thing is going on this this side I want to really show some lines I see them right here something but they should not be dark again orange one is here things are going down a bit hanging so now there are a lot of super cool very very neat branches so how about we mix a bit of a darker tone so we can see them and i'm getting again my purple and orange but let's get some more like indigo maybe indigo so we can actually see them and here there is a whole cluster there is a cluster it's nice to have them there's a thicker one there's one going straight. Maybe there's more coming towards this, towards the light, and there's a lot going on in the back, but make sure again, it should be staying in the light. It should not be too, too dark, just this medium dark that we mixed. So I'm just adding some more stuff going on. And if we overdo it, we always can paint the negative space. The negative space is this yellow, I like the negative spaces between the shapes. So here, maybe add some yellow here, add some yellow over there. This is where the light is popping through. And adding this dark right here. Now here is the tree. We don't want to lose that tree here. So if you really want to pop that those two trees in the very front, if they don't look too dark, I'll grab some nice dark tone like this indigo here and really thickly just put some darker texture right here on that edge to separate it. Just dab dab like dab it a little bit and that's going to create a nice dark contrast on the very front and here I really want to pop make this a bit darker so I'm just really putting some more indigo now again with a smaller brush we continue and we're going to lighten up that path so the path towards the end gets really yellow and light so here i'm just adding some yellow and white yellow and white that is the path right here maybe it's warmer so maybe it's a dab of orange make sure you have lots of textures nothing should be super smooth i know there's Keep painting your trees in the back. Oh, that is, I dabbed into the fabulous turquoise. When I see this turquoise, I'm like, oh, I love it. I just want to paint everything with turquoise, but I'm just gonna kind of lighten things up a bit here. So I know there's trees and with smaller brush strokes, just put dab, dab, dab. I know there's some leaves everywhere. And basically slowly building detail. Let me see, 707, so we have 20 more minutes, plenty of time, we have plenty of time. So I'm now taking a little bit of the light, so yellow and green, and I wanna just pop in some uh, squinch around here. You have some light here, some light leaves. So one, two, dab, dab, that's it. No more, no overthinking it. There is right here along this dab dab 
maybe a cooler cooler green because they're in the shadow after all so it is a cooler green right here so not too much yellow but maybe mix some blue I never even touched that cobalt so maybe that would be a good area to mix the green with the cobalt to get some cooler tones and here dab dab some more leaves give some more shape and definition of these leaves here in the very front Now you can define some of these roots. I'm leaving the very the ray of light at the very end, so we're not there yet. I'm gonna define a little bit of these roots. So let's get some more orange with white. I'd like to show that there is some. That's too light. Hang on. Okay, so here we go. So there's some more definition. There's stuff going on and getting into more detail so some areas are a bit more defined so here we have dab dab a little bit there is another root right there hold your brush lightly don't don't hold it as a pen writing pen it's very light keep it vertical vertical like 90 degrees to your canvas and just indicate some more some more of these interesting shapes right here so these are the roots i love painting roots sometimes if you lose them like add some more of the dark there is one that i've lost right here so it should be added I must have lost it that's okay you can they can always be added later and try not to mix too much colors like mix them on the canvas just lay your color and let it be fresh and do its thing all mixing happens on the palette not too much on the canvas because that's how we create mud with acrylic it's very easy to create kind of a muddy not distinct what is that area we try to keep it nice and fresh <clears throat> and I always clean my brush and just Lay your color and that's it, just leave it alone. So again, it needs some uh, some more definition here in these leaves. So again, white, green, we are working on those areas here. I know that there's some nice little shapes. Don't worry too much if they're not exactly the shapes. I know there's stuff going on. So here on this area, there's some more. So basically when you go in a forest and it's like foliage everywhere pretty much nothing is ultra defined it's you're going through you know sea of leaves that's how it feels to me so that's what we're trying to convey in our painting maybe a little bit of light here slightly and some more light over here again there's some greenery just color color everywhere really that's what it is just uh, slide it over here something's too light that should be all in the shadow and again i go back and forth with a knife you can always pop in some nice color i lost my green we need some green let's get some green right here Here it is. <coughs> so I'm mixing it again with yellow, green and yellow. And and again, you can continue painting after the end of the class. I know we may not be completely finished, including myself. So this is just kind of getting the our basics but um, as you can see the background should not be looking the same intense with the same painting with the same intensity as the foreground the colors are a little bit duller even though warmer but still not the same so interesting how my camera stops recording Okay. 
Anyway, so we're doing good. Everything is great. White and green. White and green, yes, stuff is popping in. Maybe some white, a little bit of light. And now we're going to create a nice ray of light coming through with a different brush. Let's make sure the brush is nice and clean, doesn't have too much on it. We can get some more water get some mix a nice white color and yellow and it should not be thick it's almost like a glaze we're gonna just thin thinly thinly have some like very light see how it you can see through so it's it's kind of a very transparent way of showing this light and I'm just going hoops right there and maybe some of the colors underneath are still wet but as long as you mixed a very light like transparent light color I mixed yellow and white with water so it's like a little puddle almost like a watercolor so that's called basically glazing you're just glazing on top you're still seeing underneath what's happening and you're creating a mist like a little misty feeling to it I'm just dragging it down and if we messed up here just like something you can always dab it with your paper towel and lighten it up a bit if it picked up some dark tones and another dry brush sometimes I just kind of a blend it with my dry brush create a bit of a blend you can wait for the painting to actually dry and do this when the painting is dry I've, I'm almost rushed to to have it finished so I'm just laying it right there and I know underneath it's quite wet but still I'm just getting, I'm gonna get something nice and white right here that's where my light is I just need to pop some more white right here and I really popped in some very thick white and that could be the lightest whitest the lightest light which is coming in here right behind this trees and that's kind of like the final finishing touches where we have now a total variety of, of values remember we have a range very light which is this white and very dark and again let's see what we can do and we can also work more and more on the, these rays we can you know still have some of the branches show if we lost them we can always bring them back and then soften a little bit these rays you know some maybe looking a little bit too harsh and more like lines that's why if probably if I did it on a dry on a drier painting it would have been easier but now I'm just going to add some of these little branches that I left that I lost so I'm just gonna grab so remember when they they're right in the path of those lights of the light it's gonna be warmer so I'm just gonna get pure orange and some of these branches actually I'm gonna continue paint them orange because that's what happens when they're lit by the light so right here on that path I'm gonna really make them look very orange and maybe some of these other light branches and some of these right here they're also in the path of the so one two not too parallel like maybe other summer in different directions make sure that nothing in the background is so thick like when you paint it thickly look at 
I think I mean like lines, lines that are super obvious. Like when you squint your eyes, it's so soft. This whole area in the back is so really soft. Then it should not have any feeling of harshness. So I'm just going to bring out some of these branches that I lost. These trees, some are going in this direction. And but please feel free to finish those paintings uh, even after the class and show me what you have. I'm going to add maybe some yellow here, you know how it's catching the light. And a little bit here in these. So definitely there's a lot of light. Oh, yellow is the perfect color for light. So I'm even going to take my knife and really add this some more dots of yellow where the light is right here especially there is that tree here there's I want to break some areas so it's not completely framed like a circle So a little bit more light. I see how it's hitting this area here. So all these brushes, this uh, foliage here where it's being hit by the light, it's going to get some very light highlights. So I'm adding these right now, right here, with yellow and white. So these are final finishing touches of bright tones to brighten up our area. where it's being hit again by the, by the light it's gonna have some nice highlights right here maybe not so bright I will tone them down later but again bring those right here and again it's popping into the path so these are actually our highlights so it's falling right here with a knife you can always use the knife because the knife gives you great texture great texture for the trees our recordings are doing good if something looks too intentional or if you're as if it's really really contrived um, always check your knife and do something more expressive to bring it out so here I'm just adding a little bit more light in the back because I have a bit of a muddy tone so you can always blend it blend it, soften it let it disappear things are not going to be super sharp especially if they're in the light and you know you can take a dryer brush and just go dab 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 create some more texture some smaller shapes this is the bob ross yeah that's when bob ross comes comes in handy so i have a really spread out old brush dab some light and you can always you know create some texture with that smaller like little smaller dots so that gives us range in terms of scale like we have small big and now tiny like over here we have something tiny over right here no water remember there's no water only when we did those sun the rays of light we use some transparent light tone like a glaze and then if we lost some of some of the background behind we can always edit on top of it remember this is acrylic 
so we can always add after it's dry like in my case I kind of lost some of these interesting very fine little branches you can always add those and again old brush add some highlights with basically very light tone so mixing yellow and white white and yellow and nice light and it's probably coming into the tree in some areas we lost somebody it's okay it's all right what time is it okay so it's 7 24 guys feel free to show me what you have and i'm sure you you seem to be deeply in deeply focused which is good that's always a good thing everybody is painting Again, if you really want to strengthen that light a little bit more, I just get pure white and sort of add some more little blobs here. I know there's more up here about that, so I'm going to emphasize it a little bit more. And then you can always add <coughs> some of these branches if you lost them. But whatever is light, if you've noticed when you look at something that is against light, it always, you can see quite defined shapes, really. Shapes sort of disappear against the light. So <clears throat> try to communicate that in your painting and it's gonna look really nice. I'm getting more light. I'm putting some more light here, white and yellow. and adding texture yeah and that tree that is right behind the tree sort of look now looks very dark almost like as dark as my front the trees in the front i will grab a small brush and slightly lighten it up with purple indigo purple indigo and a little bit just a little tiny itty bitty white just and maybe orange just to get this almost gray tone and have some vertical brush strokes on it just to lighten it so it's not it gives you a sense of depth like it's really going behind and here we see some of that branch that I lost so I'm going to edit and then it's going to come back here but make sure that again those branches in the back are not so obvious they're not very thick because they're far away it's kind of a now you see it now you don't situation so I'm gonna make some neutral again almost grayish 